The tough news is that we are in a new economic reality. The better news is that we have people like my next guest who are not just articulating the problem. Lamentation is a great thing to read, but after a while you go like, where's the solution? And she is one for solutions. I'm talking about Dr. Joanne Tull. She is a University of the West Indies lecturer, cultural industries development and management. She's a writer, a researcher, a consultant in creative industries in the Caribbean. She holds a PhD in international relations that focuses on the business of copyright and copyright industries in the Caribbean. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Even thank the you. studio smiles that you were here, so that's a good thing. Uh, we are talking about about uh, carnival and event tourism. I am going to start by uh, thanking you for your work. I spent an extended period of time uh, reading on a number of things you did along with uh, Mr. Nurse, uh, uh, wonderful studies indeed. I want to uh, make very clear to our listeners, is tourism we're talking about, we're talking about the economics of carnival, and they are related. So let me see if we can get the components straight. What is event tourism? Okay. So event tourism is this interesting niche that has developed when cultural goods and services started to become a big deal for many people in the world. When I say a big deal, we found that people started to travel more, not for the three S's or the four S's, sand, sea, sand, sea, sun, mm -hmm. sex, surf but rather that they would go to experience another culture, um, mm. to engage in the heritage, um, to experience the language and the life of the people. And uh, this was something that the Caribbean found itself um, benefiting from. And, and notice I said found itself, mm -hmm. because in the first mm -hmm. instance, we didn't really have a plan for that. Oh, okay. um, we had tourism. Some of the islands, as you know, had a tourism strategy. Um, very early on, Barbados, um, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. um, St. Lucia. Um, but what is interesting of these destinations that I've just called, um, by the time the 80s ended and that mass tourism product seemed not to be as competitive, and we had many reasons for that, including a 911, all these other things that came thereafter. Mm -hmm. But even as the 80s came to a close, it, it was clear that, that that could not give you the edge if you wanted to really make a bang from your tourism buck. Mm -hmm. And so they began to look into the festivals and they, they saw how they could use these festivals to, to capitalize on, on what seemed to be a, a growing market mm -hmm. um, for other places like Paris and London and, and Canada, all of these places as we know, you could call something as part of their culture that people would go there for specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so one could say that, um, I would say what was most notable was when St. Lucia jumped out <laughs> with the jazz the festival, jazz festival yes. mm -hmm. um, in that particular way. And St. Lucia took pains um, to uh, make it a, a cultural tourism product or an event tourism product um, where they had the BET join them to collab and, and, and they also then were able to capture another subsector that people don't really recognize, which is a broadcast tourist. Now yeah, let's just be clear that this is a clear what we're talking about. So a broadcast tourist is someone mm. who does not leave where they're living, but they sit on their couch mm -hmm. and they take in. Chances are they would have paid mm -hmm. for the viewing and even if they didn't, the advertisers yes. would have certainly platformed for the event to be broadcasted. This collaboration you speak of was between the St. Lucia uh, Tourist, Tourist Board, Board and Black Entertainment Television. And Black Entertainment Television, uh, Mr. Yes. Johnson seeing the, seeing the way yes, that we can Yes, they had it for many years. Indeed. And people could tell mm -hmm. you about it. it, it, it because you had BT in the Caribbean, so then people in the Caribbean as well had an opportunity to see St. Lucia Jazz Festival. So that that's one of the, um, I suppose one could say, the success stories of how the event tourism product mm. then also became another kind of product. But as we know, Barbados is not slow on it, neither is Jamaica. Most of the islands in the Caribbean in St. Kitts, you have um, the St. Kitts Music Festival. Um, so, you notice I did not say Trinidad and Tobago. No, we, we, we so. hold it that far for less. And, and there's another part that you raised there, because the question of broadcast tourism, it is not just that broadcast tourism for folks who are sitting on the couch and will stay there. You are in 
fact, inviting people. That's you right. are you are getting promotions. So even That's if right. a big um, conglomerate uh, come to you and say, "Here is ten dollars," uh, you right. don't measure the fact that you're getting ten dollars because it's not a case of what you see; it's what you will get eventually. That's and and right. I mention this because when you talk about um, a lot of uh, a lot of what's happening in the region fell into the arms of people is because folks are looking for the immediate upfront when you speak in terms of getting things done, as against looking at down the road. The man gives you ten dollars; you gotta your ROI that ten dollars because Correct. what you what what you don't get immediately you call it an investment yes. and eventually you're going to get a return of that of about 400 percent so it's worth doing that indeed indeed and and you are quite correct in your assertion um initially when the, that collaboration uh, was brought into fruition. There were people who scoffed at it. I remember. They felt mm -hmm. that St. Lucia was selling mm -hmm. their soul. That's right. And all other manners of things that we have often heard um, from Caribbean people about the festival mm -hmm. platform. And that I is something for us to learn from, that. yes. Yes, so, so there was that. Um, I, I want to jump to Trinidad, but I know we'll come back. Trinidad is very fortunate. Because the other examples that I called, they had to craft that project. That's right. Um, St. Lucia Jazz Festival was created to create a festival tourism or an event tourism product. Mm -hmm. It was placed in May. If you look at their, their tourism stats, you would see that May, June, I believe it's in May, has become a third season on their tourism calendar. So and Heather, too, that was all the way down. May was a very low. Uh, yes, it was very, mm -hmm. very, very low. Mm -hmm. If you look at Grenada, I might understand if I recall from my research, um, the late Morris Bishop would have moved that carnival from the traditional time of, of um, um, the, the pre-Lenten mm -hmm. period to August, the week after Barbados crop over, to be able to do same. And that has created another tourist season for Grenada during the period of August. Mm -hmm. Same thing for Barbados crop over. Trinidad and Tobago has been fortunate in the sense that Trinidad and Tobago has or always had this cultural phenomenon that came out of the people that expressed or, 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 or showcased the expressions of the people mm -hmm and for the most part, continues to try to be true of the culture and, and the, the sensibilities of its people. And I, I'm choosing my words very carefully because I know there are those, um, uh, I suppose one might say the purists who would say, Dying carnival now, but that, that's another story. But for the most part, well, it, it's, it's an evolutionary thing because I mean, you can go all, yes. way, all the way back to the colonists and marking the, colon the, right. the, the, the old uh, colonial that's masses right. coming all the way down. That's the fact right. is, evolution is a reality, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, that as this thing evolved, mm -hmm. it became attractive given the, the context that was going on in the globe, which was that one people were traveling more and they mm -hmm. wanted to see something different, but then the diaspora, the diaspora became a diaspora that had earning power or spending capacity. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so the diaspora, and then by extension, the diaspora's children who never saw where their parents came from but identified That's with right. it because of the diasporic carnivals, decided, well, they, they want to come to the source. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they have a time in Notting Hill or they have a time in Labor Day or Miami or Caribana, so they want to come home. To this Trinidad and they have a Tanti or a Mami or Granny and they of course gonna come back to Trinidad and Tobago. And with those factors, mm -hmm. those elements, you saw a Trinidad and Tobago carnival emerging, not just being a cultural expression, but taking on the, the, the formation of, of an industry. In understanding this, you know, because, and, and you're quite right, you look at Notting Hill, you look at Miami, you look at um, you, uh, the county, you look in New York City, mm -hmm. and they are like photocopies, and folks go like, okay, we got the copy, can we get the original? And they come here, and, and, and the amount of kids that make up that 1.3 million on Labor Day Parkway every year, mm -hmm. uh, they're hearing of this, they're coming, they're influencing their, their friends, because again, the whole assimilation process yes. is almost so seamless now yes. that the diaspora is even the best sales persons for us. Yes, they, yes. The, the festival becomes an animator, yes. which is, is that it, it triggers excitement 
amongst persons to spread that excitement to others and encourage them to come. Can be word of mouth. So we've got something that is a natural part of us, and you left us for last, us being Trinidad and Tobago, because it has not been taken advantage of that opportunity. Yes. But a lot of money has been spent in Carnival. We hear it every year. What are we doing? Just spending the money without strategy? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Spending the money without planning? Or is it that we see it as a home product for home, the home audience enjoyed by those who visit and not see it as what it is, a business? Well, what it can be. Well, let's take it from the back and come come to your first point. Um, the idea of it being a business is not a shared view nationally. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we have to recognize, and I think it's something that, that has to be engaged with if we are serious about benefiting from it in the way that we believe we can and, and what we think it offers. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing. That does not mean to say that business does not go on. That also does not mean to say that business should be the end all and be all. And I always preface anything I have to say about the business of Carnival with that. Mm -hmm. Because there was a time, and a very recent time, where persons who would be engaged in the industry part of the Carnival was pushing the business agenda so much, one could have easily thought that creativity had to take a back seat to the business component. And I, I wish to tell the listeners that anytime you're dealing with the business of culture, you cannot leave out creativity. If the creativity is not there, you are not likely to generate a sustainable industry. Is it a fair extrapolation from what you just said to look at what is going on where folks say now it's um, almost the dental floss costumes is against real costumes. Is that a, a, a subset, one of the consequences <laughs> of that over-commercialization you were talking about that was recently attempted? Well, I would rather say it's an overexposure of that aspect of the commercialization. Mm. And, I, and I say that because the regional carnivals exist. The traditional mass forms are still there mm -hmm. and they are supported. However, I think we are all aware that when we look into our dailies as the carnival approaches and during the period and thereafter, mm -hmm. there is a focus on the dental floss, as you call it. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it has to do with what the dental floss um, implies, you know, um, anything to do with sex or sexuality, you know, is always a, a showstopper, so to speak, or at least mm -hmm. that is the perception. Um, so there is this idea that you need to present this, this beautiful bevy of ladies and Trinidad and Tobago is this carnival where this is what you will get when you come and what have you. So there's that. But if it were that we put things in place that would also allow for the fair exposure of what also exists, which, which falls more on the traditional side, um, not, not necessarily a bees and bikini, but... but carnival and mastery that is crafted and honed here, you are likely to see some of that mind, mind frame, that, 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 you, that mindset shifting, mm -hmm. likely. And I'm saying likely because if you look at the kiddies carnival, which is well supported, that is where you see a lot of the craft and the creativity yes. and what have you, and those children have parents. Yeah, the intention is not to, in, 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 in that setting, the intention is not to exhibit the body, it is in fact to exhibit the craft. And it is, yeah. the, 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 the irony in this is that uh, Canadalia, I think it is, um, it was actually the celebration of flesh. Mm -hmm. So on the one time you have it arriving from that, and that's why it's so important that on three occasions you have used, you either evolve or you tweak or you look at the new uh, expression. Yes, because if you took this in the literal sense, uh, what they're doing with the floss is exactly Exactly what kind of an area is all about the, the exhibition of the flesh. Right, so the creativity we see it mm -hmm. in the kiddies carnival. Right. right. But but again, mm -hmm. no, if I may throw in another food for thought, that even where the dental floss is, is, is concerned, and I, I'm just quoting you. Um <laughs> it seems me having to give a long explanation. Yes. Folks can get yes. the graphic on that yes. really easy. <laughs> One can be creative there. Mm. One can be creative there. It, 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 is, it is about whether or not you just simply want to offer dental floss. And right. I suppose if we are very fair and honest about what we understand by event industry, one of the platforms of an event industry is experience. Mm. Is experience. There are some colleagues who write on the experience economy. I often tell my students, we are in the feel-good business. We are learning about 
how we make people feel good. Mm -hmm. But we want to do it in a sustainable manner. 